Let's make this player signing graphic three different ways. So I've got my assets all set up. We've got a Will Selfridge photo that I've also gone ahead and cut out already. If you don't know how to cut out a photo, I have a video on that, but you can go to the quick selection tool and go up to select subject. I've also got this mountain background that we'll do some editing to, and then the Salt Lake Shred logo. So we're gonna be making a Salt Lake Shred signing graphic for Will Selfridge. Let's get started with the first graphic. I'm going to turn off these assets. We can pull from this folder and just starting with a blank white background, I'm gonna draw out a blue rectangle. We're gonna make it a square. And for the color, I'm gonna use Salt Lake's blue. So I've got this in my swatches. And with the rectangle tool selected, U is the shortcut. You can hold shift and click and drag to make a perfect square. We're gonna draw one out so it's 10 inches by 10 inches. And now with the move tool selected, you can hit command A to select the whole screen. And then with these icons at the top, we can center justify both horizontally and vertically. I'm also gonna go back to the shape tool, U is a shortcut, and make these corners rounded, something around there. And I'm gonna take that mountain image and use it in the background. So let's copy this over. You can hold option and click and drag any layer to duplicate it. So we're gonna drag it down to our graphic folder. I'm just gonna blow this up, Command T to transform. So we've got kind of the mountain peeking out over the square. So maybe something like this. Now I'm also gonna drop on a gradient map over this mountain to kind of better blend it into the white background and make it take on that color. So when you go down to your effects and go to gradient map, you can change the color scheme. We can do this black to white preset and just change the black to the Salt Lake blue again. And it might go even lighter. Salt Lake has a few different blue tones. So we can go with like the lightest blue and move these dials towards each other to just get this like nice light white mountain background. Pretty subtle. And then I do want to mask out this bottom part and kind of have it fade into a white bottom of the graphic. So let's put a mask on our mountain image. Click that icon down at the bottom and then hitting G, you can hold shift and cycle through G. So this is the gradient tool. We can set our gradient to black to transparent, which it should default to if you have your foreground color set to black. And then just clicking and dragging up from about there, we can slowly fade out the mountain image. So we're left with just some subtle texture on the left and right side of the box. Now let's take our player cutout and bring it into the box. So again, going to my assets folder, holding option and clicking and dragging on my photo layer, bring it into graphic one. Close that back up. Like I said, I already cut out this image. I also ran it through camera raw filter just with some basic photo edits, kind of make the player cut out pop a bit more, but we're gonna blow this up to about there. We can always adjust the sizing later. And now what I wanna do is I wanna keep some background from the initial photo and kind of fill in this blue rectangle with it. So to do that, let's duplicate this cutout layer with command J. And with the layer that's on bottom, let's hold shift and click on the mask to make it disappear. And then I'm gonna clip this image to the blue box below. So holding option, you can hover in this space between layers and click. And now we've got this image taking on the shape of the blue box. I'm gonna make it match the color too. So let's first go up to image adjustments, black and white. That'll desaturate everything. And then going to the blend modes, we'll switch it to overlay. So now we have this kind of cool blue textured look behind our player cutout. And now with the cutout, I wanna put him more in this box with just the head sticking out. So what we can do is group this cutout into its own folder by holding shift and clicking on the group icon. And then holding command, you can click on this thumbnail of the rectangle to get the marching ants around it. And we can click the mask icon on this group. So now we've met masked out everything in this group, which right now is just the player cutout. We've masked it to this rectangle shape. So now if we want the head sticking out, let's just take a black brush, B for the brush tool, or sorry, a white brush, and we can set the hardness up to 100. Anything in white on a mask is gonna show through, anything in black is gonna hide. So we want the head to be showing, so let's take our white brush and brush in white to reveal the head. Now let's close up this folder and make our text so we can make a new layer, T for the type tool. We'll stick with this blue for the foreground color and just click once. We'll type out will sell fridge. And the font we're using today is Montserrat Extra Bold. We'll use the various font weights for different things, but I'm gonna blow up this font to 68. We can hit V for our move tool, Command A to select the whole screen and center justify the name. On the same text layer, let's hit return and type out Salt Lake Shred 2026. 
roster. And for this font, I'm going to first divide this by 1.6. 1 1.6 is the golden ratio. It's what I like to use for hierarchy as far as text goes. So if I divide or multiply by 1.6, that's kind of the next step down as far as the font size goes. So I'm gonna do it one more time, divide by 1.6, and we'll also change this font to semi-bold. So we'll get some contrast between the bold name and the semi-bold subtitle. Let's also go to our character panel and bring up the spacing between letters. So something like this, and then we can also bring in the spacing between lines so it's not so tight together. Let's hit Command J to duplicate this text layer. And I'm just gonna retype out Will Selfridge, but the way I'm doing it is with a capital W and a capital S. We can switch this font to Artie Signature. Now you might have an actual signature of a player that you can use on this type of graphic. I don't happen to have one for Will Selfridge, so I'm just using a kind of a generic signature font, but you can view this as a sort of placeholder. I'm gonna blow this up and have it with like a bit of overlap going over the image and the text below it. We can switch the font color to yellow to the Salt Lake yellow and sizing, you know, obviously up to you and whatever looks good, but somewhere around here. Next, I'm gonna duplicate our initial text layer again, just by holding option, clicking and dragging up. And I'm just gonna take the subtitle part. So let's delete the name. Just on the subtitle font, let's type out signed space slash space one year deal. This is gonna be kind of our header text to make the whole composition feel a bit more balanced. And then we're gonna add the logo at the bottom. So again, we can take this from the assets folder, holding option, clicking and dragging. Logo, we can size way down. I'm just bringing up my grids with command apostrophe. I have a whole video on grids, guides, and margins. This is what I use for just figuring out spacing and counting the number of boxes between elements. So something like this. And I do want the player's head to be a little bit lower than that title. Right now I'm just using a two box margin from the top and bottom. So let's bring the whole cutout as well as the background down just by selecting both these layers and then nudging them. I'm just holding shift and going with the arrow key. Last thing with this first graphic is just a couple finishing effects that we'll use on all three of these graphics. So I'm gonna make a new folder, call it finishing and making a new layer, holding shift and hitting delete should bring up this fill box, 50% gray is what we want. Hit okay, filter, convert for smart filters, and then filter noise, add noise. 6% is good. And then we'll switch this blend mode to hard light. This is gonna give us a nice layer of grain going over the whole thing. If we zoom in, you can see these like gray specs. I'm just gonna drop the fill down to 50%. So like it's a little less intense. And then I'm also gonna bring on a curves adjustment layer. We'll do this underneath the grain. We've got our curves. Let's bring the black point up by adding another point and then lifting this lowest one. We can also lift the top of the curve too, just to bring in some more bright this is a very bright themed graphic. Maybe we want this point going down a bit too. Just getting some more contrast in the dark of the jersey. Some sort of S curve. You can just see it before and after with the finishing effects. So that's gonna do it for this first graphic. Let's move on to our second one. I'm gonna duplicate this entire thing, Command J, and then rename this folder Graphic two. Now for this one, first thing I'm going to move over the cutout and the box. We'll bring it all the way over to the right side and we'll just compose this graphic a little bit differently with the player cutout on one side and the text on the other. So for this one, we're going to free the cutout. First of all, I'm going to turn off some of this text just so we can get a better feel for the composition. I'm going to delete the mask on our player cutout. So going into our group. We can also ungroup this layer. And now with the cutout and the photo box behind it, let's size it up with Command T to transform. And we'll just make the cutout span more of like the full height of the canvas. I'm just gonna keep it moved over. And now with this blue box, I'm also gonna drag it up a little bit. So holding, holding Option, you can click and drag from these points just to kind of expand it. We can maybe bring it in a little bit too if we wanna save some room for some text over there. Let's also recenter the rectangle. So just selecting the rectangle layer, Command A to select the whole screen, and then clicking our align vertical centers icon at the top. We can maybe bring this up a little bit more too. So let's take our name text from before. We can hold off on the signature. Let's just focus on the name. I am gonna hit return between the first and last name here just because we have more vertical space to fill up. Also gonna delete the Salt Lake Shred 2026 roster. I'm just bringing up my grids to make sure we have like two boxes on the left side and then two boxes 
is, let's actually bring in this rectangle a little bit further, line it up perfectly. Will, I'm gonna highlight this and change the font to, let's do semi-bold. And I'm also gonna divide it by 1.6, the font size. So we have a smaller first name, and we can also space this out and increase the spacing between lines. So just a slightly different text treatment. We can move this logo to the left corner. Again, bringing up the grids. And now with the top left corner, let's again duplicate this layer, make a copy of it. T for the type tool, we're gonna left justify it. And I'm just gonna type out 2026 salt lake shred. We can switch the spacing back to zero and fix the space between lines. Let's again divide by 1.6 lines back together. We can also make this font a little bit bolder. So we'll do extra bold font. So we're gonna use this in the top left, but I'm also gonna have some colors going in the top left too. So let's hit Command J again to duplicate and just move this text over. I'm gonna type just three periods spaced out one line each and then selecting them all and blowing them up in size is just gonna create these like circles that we can change the color of. So first let's line these up with the center of each line and then bring up my grids again. We'll do this two boxes from the left, two boxes from the top. And for the circles, let's make the top one blue, the second one we'll make yellow, and the third one we'll make this light blue, just for some variety. So now we can zoom back out, and that's kind of like the top corner. I'm gonna group these into a layer, just call it top left corner. Maybe we want a little bit more space between the text and the circles. Also missing a letter in shred. And now let's bring back in our signature. So I'm just gonna size this so it's about the same width as our text here. I'm also gonna add like a little box that says signed below this. So let's again take this Will Selfridge text, duplicate it, and I'm thinking with the bottom font we'll make signed. And a smaller version is always good, divide by 1.6. And we're just gonna take a new layer and draw a box around it. So again, this rectangle tool, we'll use a blue rectangle and draw a box around signed. And we can make sure it's centered. First, let's change the text color of signed to white. And I also wanna round the corners. Again, U shortcut to get the shape tool that will allow you to round the corners. So something around there. And then to center it, you just have to hold command, click on the, the T of the signed layer or the rectangle. And then with the other one, so the rectangle selected, I'm just gonna click this vertical justify and horizontally as well with the move tool selected. We can also group these together and just call it signed. And yeah, I think maybe having the signature interact over that as well. So let's group signed the signature and the name into a folder. We'll just call it main text. And now again, command A to select the whole screen. Let's just vertically center this. See, I feel like the yellow doesn't show up great on these mountains. So we might wanna change the signature font to the light blue. I think that just looks a little bit better. And honestly, these mountains, we can change with each of these graphics if we want to, just by like dragging this image back and forth. Something I'll do with different templates is just using a same background image, but slightly tweaking it so things don't feel too repetitive. We could blow this one up to Command T and just make it a little bit bigger. Let's move on to our third and final graphic. So I'm gonna collapse graphic two and again, duplicate it, Command J. Let's rename this folder graphic three and turn off graphic two. So for this one, I'm gonna move this main cutout to the left and kind of start with that layout. We can turn off the logo, we can turn off the main text as well as the corner. So let's take our guy and move them over. I am gonna bring up my grids and leave like a one box, eh, maybe like a two box margin on the left side. And then I'm gonna bring in a new solid color layer. So let's make a new rectangle of yellow. Again, bringing up my grids. Let's draw out a rectangle that spans all the way to the fourth box from the left. So we can zoom in, just make sure we're being precise. So let's take our main text and just isolate the first and last name, not the signature version. So I'm just duplicating that layer, start from scratch. Let's rotate it, Command T, and then just click and drag from a corner. And let's also left justify it. I'm also gonna take Will and make it the same size font as Selfridge. So we can retype Will, and we'll make this one, similarly we'll do the semi bold. So we have a bit of contrast there. And bringing up the grids, I mean, we can keep like a two box margin separating all these different 
elements if we want. So two boxes from the right. We can, honestly, let's bring the rectangle over a bit more, just transforming it so we have that similar two box margin. And we can bring up the size of our cutout as well as the photo too, to just better fill the space. Now with our name, I'm also gonna draw out like a little box for the logo. Let's make a new layer and get our rectangle tool going again. And let's just draw out, I'm gonna hold shift. So again, it's a perfect square. Round the corners and just separate this out. We can take our logo layer and I'm just gonna position only the icon part of the logo in this box. So let's take a color overlay effect and just switch the color to white so we can see it. And we could do like a two color version of this. Let's take this logo and clip it to the rectangle so we don't have any of the text showing. So just holding option, hovering in the space between layers and clicking, and then duplicating this. Let's do the same thing, hover in the space and click. And I'm gonna turn the color overlay off on on this lower one. So now we have the lower one in full color. The upper layer, we just want the bottom part in white. So I'm gonna take a rectangular marquee tool, M is a shortcut, and just draw a box around the part that I want, staying in white and then clicking the mask icon. So this top layer is just showing the bottom part of the logo. The bottom layer is just showing the top part of the logo. So we can take our logo and the name, group that together. We'll call this main text. We can even get a little bit more contrast with the last name, just changing this font to black. From our previous main text, I wanna take that signed box and just bring it to the surface here and put it in the top left corner. So again, with the grids, we'll make sure it's that two box margin. Let's just take this blue and extend it all the way off the screen off the canvas and line this up so it's sticking out like so and then the signed should be about there too. Maybe we need a slightly taller box so we can always transform this, command T and bring it up a little bit more. So something around there and then just again, double checking. So we've got this two box margin on top. For the top right, I'm gonna bring back that top left corner from the previous graphic. So that's this color dots with 2026 Salt Lake Shred. I would like for this to fit within the same width that our text and logo are, but that's maybe just making it like too tiny. Eh, I don't know, maybe not. Yeah, I mean, we could just match the height of the signed element over there. So let's do that. It's close enough to the width. I think it works in that corner. And then the last thing for this bottom right corner, I just wanna bring the signature in there so we can go back to our main text from the previous graphic, bring out the signature. And I really just wanna fill this white space so we can even like rotate the signature like so, make it fit a little bit better and kind of have it going off the canvas. I think we want yellow for this. Yeah, it feels like the yellow mirroring on the left and right is important. So we'll go with something like this for the third graphic. That's gonna do it for our three different signing graphics. Kind of use a similar technique with all of these and just using this like blue box rounded rectangle background. You can see that consistency throughout. It was really just the layout of these signing graphics that we changed up and you know, using the same elements, there's always a million different ways you can format these graphics and compose them. So I wanted to give an example of all the different ways you can take the same elements and just repurpose them. And I do think this is super important for graphic templates in general is just knowing what elements you have at your disposal, knowing how to rearrange them to create create interesting, fresh, new graphics each time. So again, we have graphic one, very centered, graphic two, cut out on the right, and graphic three, cut out on the left. Hopefully this was helpful in giving you a taste of some different formats you can try out with your next signing graphic. Thanks as always for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one.